So I made a video a while back um, about astrology. And I was going off of, in the debates, in the series of Jordan Peterson, Sam Harrison debates, one of Sam Harris's key criticisms was to Jordan Peterson, was your charitable reading of Christianity, the same could be said of astrology. And as I pointed out at the time, no, it can not full stop. That's not a valid criticism. That's absurd, actually. And I made the video at the time. I even went into some of my own personal history with astrology. Um, you know, I dated a girl in high school who was really into it. I had the Linda Goodman Love Sign book, and so I got into it for a period of time. Knew all my friends' signs. Knew everything about it. There was a period of time I was really, really into it and knew almost everything there was to know about it. But leaving that aside, somebody commented in the video, and I promised I was going to make a video in response to his comment where I go into more depth about the idea that religion and, and uh, Christianity and astrology cannot be compared. So, here we are far, five months later, and uh, <laughs> I'm making the video. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> five months later. Five months after the fact. Um, here's my follow-up. So, let's take a look at comparing astrology to Christianity. See, that's one of the things that an atheist likes to do, is belittle the entire religion of Christianity, straw man it in a sense, by making a slippery comparison to something that's really obviously like false and superstitious. But it's deeper than that. It isn't just that astrology is false and predicated on, you know, kind of inane superstitious belief. The reason why you can't compare them, they're absolutely incomparable. Astrology is a parlor game. Now, if, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's approach this from the other direction. If Christianity isn't true, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, okay, if, that, if the whole history of the religion of Christianity is predicated on a non-truth and there isn't a God, you still have the Bible and the whole history of Christianity to contend with. So let's say, just for argument's sake, that there isn't a God and it's predicated on the not true. You still have the Bible, inarguably, inarguably, the cornerstone foundational text of the entire civilization that you have inherited, inarguably. There's no escaping that fact, that actual fact, whether God exists or not. See, religion is not a zero-sum game. Atheists love to pretend that it is, but in fact it isn't. That's where Brett Weinstein is going with the idea of metaphorical truth. Because in the Bible, there are things that are metaphorically true. They are wisdom or spiritual truths. And they are true, and they will hold themselves to be true, irrespective of whether God exists or does not exist. And they're all over the place in the Bible. But let's just go to an example. Let's just point one out. There's the parable of the... Uh, what is it called? The parable of the Good Samaritan. Okay, so we turn, we turn ourselves in our Bible, let us, let us turn ourselves in our Bible, little children, to Luke chapter, chapter 10, verse 24. Hallelujah, give him praise in the house of the Lord. Give him praise and glory. Uh, no, not 24, 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said to him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man. See, Jesus answered him with the parable of the Good Samaritan. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him, and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And he, which now, and then Jesus asked him, which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? 
And they said, He that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Now, let's say, let's, let's take the atheist, let's go with the atheist argument. God doesn't exist. Okay. That parable is still ignore, enormously valuable. Enormously valuable. And it deals with metaphorical truths that are true, irrespective of whether God exists or does not exist. And that's just one little passage from the Bible I just thought of at random. Honestly. It's not a really groundbreakingly important part of the Bible. It's not, you know, the foundation of, uh, you're not going to, you probably go five months at a church before you hear a sermon on it. It's just one little thing I picked up at random, just thought of, okay, how about the Good Samaritan? For example, and then you see right there, the first thing Jesus said to him, love your neighbor as yourself. That's extraordinarily sound advice. That's extraordinarily sound, wise advice, irrespective of whether Jesus was God or not. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's what I was saying. If you prayerfully consider the Bible and try and internalize the messages in the Bible, you will wind up becoming a better person. Full stop. Did I stutter when I said it? No. If you prayerfully consider the Bible and try and internalize the messages in the Bible, you will become a better person. Try and internalize loving your neighbor as yourself. Then he goes on to say, who is my neighbor? And basically that parable can be read as, you know, very expansively, we are all neighbors, bro. It's against racism. The Samaritans were a different, they were enemies of, of the Hebrews. It's kind of a parable against racism, being really expansive in your view of who is your neighbor. We're all neighbors here on this planet because we're all God's children. It's a beautiful, easily understandable, metaphorical truth. Now, let's go back to astrology for a second. Why I was into astrology when I was young, I think I mentioned this other video, maybe I didn't. I was kind of cool, I thought it was cool. I was like, Aries, I'm a fire sign, man. It's the most masculine sign of the zodiac. I thought it was really cool. I liked what it had to say about me being an Aries, so I got into it. That had a lot to do with it. I'm pioneering spirit, fire sign of the zodiac, you know, most masculine sign in the zodiac. I think that might have done it right there. Honestly, I think that was probably it. 14 year old boy, what do you want? Oh, yeah, a manly man, awesome, <laughs> you know. So I was really into it for a season and it's kind of interesting. But now let's say for argument's sake, oh, just a for instance, that astrology isn't true. It's not, it's, predicate. it's a lie, it's not really true. You're not a fire sign, there's no such thing. What have I got? Astrology is not true. What do I got to show for it? Zero. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. If it's not true, it's, it's, only, it's a complete and utter waste of time. Even if Jesus is not God, even if Jesus is not God, there is a really, really profound reason why this particular book was the cornerstone of Western civilization. And it's illustrated just from one little tiny passage that I read to you. Even if he's not God, he's almost inarguably the greatest, if not one of the great, if, if not the greatest, one of the greatest moral teachers of all time. And if you read the stuff that he actually teaches and try and internalize it, you will be the better for it. Full stop. God or no God. That's a metaphorical truth. So it has actual value in substance and sustenance, whether God exists or not. And to compare it to, to astrology, I mean, it's such a false comparison. You know, it's such a false comparison. Keep in mind, okay, the society that you live in presently today at one time was called Christendom. Did you know that? <laughs> Did you know that? You think, you know, you think you don't like living in Bible Belt. How would you like, as an atheist, how would you like living in, you know, 700 AD where the entire civilization was Christian? Christendom, that's what they used to call it meaning it was the foundation of the entire civilization. To compare it to astrology is so false, it's almost absurd. But atheists get away with that type of, you know, dumbing down of, of religion all the time. Why? Because they assent to it amongst each other. Oh, yeah, it's superstitious mumbo-jumbo, just like astrology. And some other atheist goes, yeah, that's totally true. No, it's totally false. It's totally false. Even if Jesus is real or not, you should still really be contending. If Jesus isn't God, you should still be contending with the actual religion of Christianity. Because it's profoundly important. Profoundly important. You know, and it's only pure ignorance that would make you say otherwise. I had an atheist in my comment section actually tell me that there is that, that 
religions were not the structures of civilizations. I mean, mind-boggling. And he thinks he's being smart when he's just being a total ignoramus. Apparently, he's never heard of a caliphate. Have all of you, all of you should know what a caliphate is. Caliphate is a, is a society organized under the religion of Islam. There have been many throughout history. The most famous being the Umayyad Caliphate. That's the one that basically almost took over the world under the banner of Islam. Christianity was the organizing principle of our society for close to 700 years, 700 to 1,000 years. The, the society that you have inherited was known as Christendom. It was thoroughly and completely Christian. That's part of why you can't decide anything because of Norway being this really awesome secular society. Why? Because it was part of Christendom for seven to eight hundred years, which means there was a really, really big Christian influence on the society present day. You would have to fast forward three hundred years to make any type of conclusion at all about the value of a, success, of a secular society. Honestly, it's not, it's not enough information to go on. You'd have to fast forward. Uh, that's all for now on the subject. Anyways, amen.